Hey guys and gals, Never here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's heavy mail on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Promises to Keep Rofi's Path. <coughs> Goodness. Alrighty, so Alarm Chain, you are up and let's go. We sit in silence, save for the frenzied pounding of my heart. Look, I, I had a dream. I had a dream about us when we were kids. Just the two of us sitting under that big tree. Rofi's ears twitch and he tilts his head, hurt replaced by curiosity and confusion. It just felt like a memory, but something about it was wrong. And at the end, just before I woke up, my breath catches and I draw my tail around myself for comfort. A branch fell. I swallowed, struggling to force out the words. There was a flash of lightning and a big branch fell and it... It almost hit you, Rofi. It almost fell on top of you. I tackled you to get you out of the way, and then... I finally met his eyes. The memory of shattered glass resounds in my ears. And then you woke up and the branch had broken the window. Rofi finishes my thought. I nod, pulling my knees up onto the bed and stuffing my face into them. It was just a dream, though. Rofi sits down beside me once again. Look, I'm fine. I'm not flattened by a giant tree branch. I'm just as I'm just as three-dimensional as ever. My brain knows he's right, but my body won't listen. I want to return his smile, but my face just won't. He takes a second to think. I'm sorry that happened to you, though. Let me know how I can best comfort you, okay? I can recommend some resources that... I hear him slip back into that medical voice I heard earlier. He seems he seems to notice, too. Um, sorry, I'm doing it again, aren't I? It's okay. I know this is just how you were trained. The dog lets out a sharp, low bark of laughter and buries his face in his paws for a second. Honestly, I wasn't trained for this. If someone's struggles aren't physical, I'd just consult psychiatry or therapy and pass them on to those departments. We've encouraged to, we're encouraged to empathize with our patients, but we're constantly walking a thin line between that and our own personal boundaries. It just doesn't make sense, sharing some lengthy anecdote with, some, with someone to empathize with them if we only have five minutes together in the exam room. Especially if I'll, if I'll never see them again, and when I have four other patients who need me. He lets out a sigh, then looks back up to meet my gaze. The situation is different, though. I know you. I have a personal connection to you. You're not just a patient. You're a friend. And I should operate with that in mind. Sorry, I'm rambling here. What I mean to say is, I know how you feel. Honest. I know how real dreams can feel, sometimes more real than being awake. His voice falters slightly, weighed down by dreams of his own. And I'm here for you. If you ever want to talk more about your dreams, okay? My ears are always open for you. The last of the medical voice fades away, leaving only Rofi, my old friend and companion. C can I give you a hug? Would that be okay? I focus on my breathing and consider this offer. Oh god, one second now. Mm. I nod. Rofi carefully helps me out of my curled-up position, one tangled limb at a time, and swaddles me in his warm fur. I feel his heart beating softly, vibrating through his chest and against my cheek. My own heartbeat slows a little, perhaps comforted by the presence of another. Take now. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That's good. He rubs one of my arms slowly up and down in a soothing rhythm. In the span of minutes, I can feel my stomach settle. The crushing feeling in my chest begins to ease. As I sit there, protected by Rofi's embrace, I feel the fatigue from my, from my poor sleep start to seep into my body. Above me, he lets out a soft yawn. Seems he's in the same boat. I don't have the energy for any more words. I close my eyes, leaning deeper into his fur, deep into a fitful sleep. I feel myself slip in and out of consciousness a few times, but one thing remains constant all the while. Rofi. I think if I asked him to, he would hold me like this forever. His presence keeps the dreams at bay. I finally awake to him stirring above me. Morning, Leo. How are you feeling? I'm okay. Better than earlier. That's good to hear. He looks down and notices his arms still around me. Sorry, I didn't mean to. My stomach leaps at the sight of, the sight of his flushed face so close to my own. You don't have to apologize, you know. I like having you close. It's what I needed last night. Or this morning, or whatever you want to call it. Rofi giggles, giving me a gentle squeeze, then rolls his head a little. I'm pretty stiff, too. Turns out sleeping upright, even against a soft dog, isn't the best position for your neck. Do you know what time it is? The dog looks over to his phone, sitting on his desk. It's almost 11. I wonder how everyone is doing down there. Want to go check on them? Do you feel ready for company? Um, because we can stay here for a little while longer if you want. No, that's okay. I don't want to stay in bed all day. Even if it is with you. 
Okay, we can grab the rest of your stuff, too, and bring it up here. How exciting! I haven't had a roommate since freshman year of college! I can hear him force some level of cheer into his voice. Even at a time like this, he finds the energy to lift others up. He gives me another arm rub, and then slowly gets up, letting go of me. I miss his touch immediately. Do you want to head down first? I think I might go wash my face. You know, clear my head and everything. That makes sense. Last night must have been stressful for him, too. I should give him a moment to himself. Um, as long as your foot paw is alright. Nah, it's fine. I'll see you down there, okay? Brophy gives me a thumbs up and I take my leave. <sighs> after only a few more steps down the hallway, my foot paw proves not to be fine after all. I walk gingerly, the intermittent creaking of the floorboards reminding me how slow I'm moving. As I crest the top of the stairs, I hear a familiar voice. Yo, need a paw? Oh, hi, Hunter. No, I think I'm probably okay. Leaning heavily on the railing, I start to struggle down the steps. In seconds, the agile raccoon hops up to my level and slings one of my arms around his shoulder. Gonna go ahead and override you there. Follow my lead, okay? I start to object, but think better of it. It really is much easier with just a little help. Take it now. Hmm. Oh, God, y'all. Oh, God, I've been partying a little too often lately in VR chat. Oh, lordy. I start to- okay, I already did that, alright. Together we traverse the stairs much quicker, and soon we're on the couch, surrounded by plants and books from the den. He gives me a moment to catch my breath. How you two doing? I'm okay, I think. We managed to get a few more hours of sleep upstairs. Good, looks like the paw is bothering you quite a bit, huh? Yeah, I think the chaos of the moment numbed the pain, but that's wearing off now. Hunter nods. Yep, adrenaline is, adrenaline is a hell of a drug. So... Oh, Rofi has a roommate now, huh? He nudges me playfully. At that moment, we hear the dog's voice from the top of the stairs. Are you two talking about me again? Rofi hops down the stairs two at a time, the exhaustion of the previous night clearly forgotten. Hunter waves to the dog. Yo, how you holding up? Rofi gives him a thumbs up. Good, I'm glad that I'll have company in my room now. He nudges me happily. Yeah, Leo, I'll help someone to crush at video games all the time now. I'm not complaining. I'd take being beaten at video games and Rofi's presence over a freezing cold bedroom any day. It's not like I had much of a choice anyway. Hey, I'm sure Leo will catch up eventually. Yeah, I'm sure. Anyway, I was just telling Leo how much of a wild animal you were in the dorms. Dog rolls his eyes. Yeah, yeah, you know me. Always drinking and partying and doing crazy things. Hunter chuckles. What are y'all up to now? Uh, we thought it would be good to make an appearance. Let folks know we're okay. I also think I left some things down here that I'll need later. Oh! Hunter reaches behind a potted plant that's sitting on the couch and pulls out a small wooden wooden container. Theo put everything else in here for you. Sure enough, my phone charger and toiletries were sitting neatly in the box. How is he? A Theo, I mean. Hunter considers for a moment, then gestures around at the collection of odd items from the den. Busy, mostly. He's in there fixing things up right now. I offered to help, but... The raccoon shakes his head, looking a bit somber. Whatever reason, he really wants to do it himself. Basically, pushed me out of the room. He runs a paw through his hair and looks down at his knees. I realize I haven't known him that long, but it's still a bit jarring to see him so upset. I think back to Theo's reaction last night. Hunter was right. It was scary seeing him slip out of his calm, self-assured nature into the frantic fox he was earlier today. I'm trying to strike a bit of a balance, you know? I don't want to hover around him, but I want to be available when he needs help. And he will eventually. That tree branch is just too big for one person to deal with. Where are the other two? How are they doing? Well, I believe it or not, Ollie is still asleep. Uh, Artie asked us not to wake him up. At no point in getting him all worked up about this. As for Artie, he took off for his apartment a bit ago. He said something about repair materials and was out the door before I could quiz him. I thought about going after him, but... Hunter looks at the two of us a bit sheepishly. I uh, wanted to stay here and update you guys when you came down. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I don't know, it felt like the right thing to do. Wanted to make sure you were alright. But Rofi walks over to his seat on the couch and gives him a big hug from behind. Thanks, Hunter. We really appreciate it. Of course. The big guy perks up immediately at Rofi's hug, giving the dog an affectionate pat on the shoulder. I don't know how long fixing the den will take, so it's great that you two can share a room. Rofi and I share a smile. He was, he was so quick to offer it, too, without a second thought. Anyway... Hunter slides his phone out of his pocket and rises to his paws. It's been 15 minutes, so I'm due to ask Theo if he needs help again. He'll break down eventually. 
I instinctively reach for my phone to check the time, but quickly realize that it's dead. Oh, I gotta charge, go charge this thing. I stand up, only to be greeted by a flash of pain from my paw. Ugh! I hit sharply and fall back down onto the couch, both Ruffy and Hunter jumping up to help me. Oh, hey, careful! Here, let me charge it for you. He grabs my charger from Theo's carefully packed box, but as he holds it out, Ruffy darts in front of him, snatching the cable almost aggressively from his paws. Nope, I got it, don't worry. Hunter and I share a look as Rofi hands me the cable with a smile. There's an outlet right next to the couch if you reach around. Though the dog is clearly concerned about my pain, I can tell there's something else driving him too. Protectiveness, maybe? Hunter wipes, wipes the surprise off his face, his normal smile returning. Huh, okay then, looks like y'all have this under control. Guess my updates for you guys are all done. I'm off to bother Theo, catch you later. The raccoon waves and hops out of the room, leaving with just Rofi and me. Hey, Rofi, you okay? Huh? What do you mean? Well, you seem really eager to hand me my cable. Oh, that was nothing. You're my... Uh, my patient, right? So I should be taking care of you. Uh-huh. What the fuck were you about to say, boy? Huh? What were you about to say, Rofi? You're my... You're my what now? You're my what? <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, anyway, we should also grab their air mattress and move it to your room for tonight. I try to get up again, leaning on just my good paw, only making a step towards the mattress next to the couch before Rofi interjects. Oh, I figured we'd just share my bed. Oh! I'm not sure why that didn't occur to me, given our setup last night and our nap this morning. If, uh, it's okay with you. I cannot but smile at his hesitation. Of course. I guess we should deflate the mattress then, huh? His tail swishes behind him. Yeah, I can, I can do it. Just sit back. He quickly finds a release valve for the air mattress, and in no time at all, it has it folded up neatly on the couch. Hmm, what to do now? Oh, hey, we haven't eaten yet. Want me to throw something together from the fridge? That sounds good. Before long, Rofi and I are eating together in the kitchen. After a few bites, he lets out a huge yawn. Ugh. Oh gosh, I really need more sleep tonight. The blankets Theo gave me were so warm and cozy and comfy. The dog trails off, already lost in a daydream. Someone's awfully excited to sleep. Well, you weren't the only one that slept poorly. He dropped, Rofi drops his energetic facade for a moment, long enough for me to pry. Uh, sorry, was last night really bad for you? He rubs his eyes at both paws. To be honest, I kept waking up. I had just settled down for the third or fourth time when the branch fell. Oh, yikes, was it me? Did I roll around too much? <coughs> <laughs> Goodness. Oh, God. Ow. Murphy laughed softly, paw still covering his eyes. No, it wasn't you. If anything, it was nice to have you there when I woke up. It was just my brain. I'm being a little mean with my dreams. Him too, huh? Did you want to talk about it? It's alright. I've just had this recurring dream that I can't shake off is all. It doesn't look like he'll offer much more than that, at least right now. That sucks, Murphy. I'm sorry. Put my paw on his shoulder. Let me know if you don't want to talk. If you do want to talk about it, okay? I feel like it's the only fair that I return the favor. The dog nods quietly. Let the conversation settle for the first time since reuniting. He doesn't pick it back up for a good while. We continue eating in silence. I hope tonight is a little kinder to him. I lose track of time sitting there with Rofi, and finally I speak up. Hey, I think you're. I think you'd find a part of my dream last night fun. Yeah. What happened? Well, remember middle school math team? His eyes grow wide. I clearly just unlocked some deep memory of his. I knew that would get him excited. And we'd get snacks all the time. How could I forget? Yeah, I basically dreamed up a retelling of that. We went to the great tree at the town square, ate some sweets, did some cloud gazing. My storytelling takes me back to the fuzzy warmth of my dream briefly. And I'm going to pause it right there, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank y'all if I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you for our silver-tier patron, Gage Silver, and thank you for going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks to our gold-tier patron, uh, patrons Toby and blah. Y'all, my brain ain't working right now. Toby and... Zeke. Toby and Zeke. Yes, there we go. Brain worked. All right, anyway, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.